My wife and my dead wife Doesn't anybody see her at all? Thank you. I have a feeling that, uh, I have a feeling that only, only you, as I said before, could have written that song. Well, only I did write it. Yeah, only yeah. you did. <laughs> it's true, but it's, it's sort of the kind of s sustained vignette that Nick Lowe also specializes in yeah. with songs like Lately I've Let Things Slide, where you have a domestic situation. And we Brits are very domestic. Yeah. Well-traveled, well-read, domestic, expressive, but let's not talk about Nick Lowe anymore. He's just going to confuse our audience. I thought you were talking about Roger Moore. <laughs> but you are, I mentioned before that you're prolific, and, and uh, I don't know, have you written a, a thousand songs now or something like that? I've, I'm sure I have, but yeah. I mean, a lot of them would have been, I'd have chucked them away. Yeah. And, and what about uh, visual art? You're, you're, you're more active as a, as a painter these days too, aren't you? Um, I, I, I was. I mean, I've done... I do a few. I can't find them, though. Yeah. I've got some paintings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, my instinct is to play the guitar, Yeah, really, and that's what I do as soon as I'm on my own. You know, I, I mean, you're meant to be doing emails, really, as a self-employed artist. One is supposed to spend most of one's time doing emails or, yeah. or social media, and, um, and I've kind of felt guilty the last... Oh, you know, I mean, 10 years at least, because I bunk off and, and play the guitar when yeah. nobody's listening yeah. at home. I think it's a good choice. I think it's, I think it's the right choice. Oh, you, it's kind of you to say that, but I mean, for instance, I'm only here because you gave me your email and then, and then one of your people gave me an email and said, this is an email from Nick, whom you met. And I mean, I had this thing saying Nick E-Town. I didn't even know your surname. I, I met Nick in a semi-darkened hotel room in San Francisco last October. And, um, and it, it was, was a jam session, a little bit. It was yeah. a jam session. Yeah. It was a hoot. A hoot. Um, yeah. but it, and it was lovely. But all I mean is all that, it's all this, emails make the world go round. I used to think it was money, but it's emails. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care if I'm rich or poor as long as I have emails. <laughs> I'll remember that. I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep in touch. I'll try to keep in touch. <laughs> but that's actually an example of how social media didn't make a whit of difference, didn't make any difference at all. We just met each other. We reminded each other that you know, you'd, we could connect, and we did. So here you well, are. Well, no, that was, that was email, pure emails. But then the social media <laughs> kicks in because then people know about this. We've been tweeting it and... So have yeah. you, and then Facebooking it, and then the show we've got oh in boy. Denver, and it all, it snowballs. This is yeah. why I'm so immensely popular now. Yeah. <laughs> it's disheartening that all those things turn into verbs. <sighs> um, well, you can cook verbs easier, can't you? They <laughs> microwave fast. <laughs> But I do, um, I, you know, despite your, despite your claims of, of uh, indolence and, and sloth, it seems like, um, you know, you still, you still crank out some good work. You know, you still do some stuff. Oh, I'm not lazy. I mean, yeah. I'm, I just mean that I am, I, I'm applying myself to playing the guitar when I should yeah. be doing more emails. Yeah. I, Jesus, I mean, I, you know, I, I have a songwriting habit, and I fund that by playing gigs. You know, we, we all grew up in this era, the era between sort of Sergeant Pepper and, I don't know, the later Radiohead albums, where the golden land of LPs, where the yeah. goal of a, of a self-respecting youth was to go out and make albums. Right. And that's what one did. And um, now it doesn't matter. We don't, you, you don't need, no one needs albums, but we still all produce them. Right. Um, because we, we just can't, you know, it's like the appendix, it's vestigial. <laughs> or like a hen that lays eggs but never actually gets to scramble any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a lot like that last one, actually. <laughs> have, there, you, have you seen that, the follow-up to Silence of the Lambs, where Ray Liotta eats his own brain? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I did hear that the, that the mother and child reunion Paul Simon song was inspired by a chicken omelette. Oh, ew. ew. Really? Yeah, yeah. 
I'm going to take that one with me and yeah. think about it for a while. <laughs> The, uh, the idea that, that a guy like you um, could have a work ethic, I'm wondering if that came from boarding school. You know, you went off to school when you were, what, 12 or 13 or something like that? Well, what they do is to the sons and daughters of privilege is they take them away from home uh, at, this, at puberty and they emotionally cripple them and then they send them out to run the country. Yeah. <laughs> and... You know, you get Roger Moore in a corner or Nick Lowe or me, you'll get the same sad story. And, um, you know, just, just, you know, kind of semi-posh Brits wandering around the world, babbling at random and hoping someone will buy them a drink. I mean, it's... it's you, it, it, yes. But, um, no, my dad w was an artist and a, a, he did everything except music. Yeah. Um, so he... He painted for a while with no success, but then he wrote a bit and he did very well with his first novel published, which was about Percy. A, a penis, penis transplant. Yeah. I see a real one has been done today and I hope yeah. the donor is somewhere in the house tonight. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I think the premise yeah. of Percy, by the way, your, your dad, I'm just trying to imagine the creative household that you grew up in, thinking about the concept of your dad's novel in which a dead body falls from a building and, and, uh... Oh, is that what happens? Is that what happens? Yeah, I think so. Somebody falls onto someone else, and the result is that the person who's been fallen on needs a new penis. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Which he gets from... And apparently, from it's, uh, yeah, you know, the real ones just happen. So, as yeah. ever, literature's... A, I can't wait till the time machine happens. Yeah. And, um, but, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. So they're just... For me, just that bit of information gave me a little bit of insight into your childhood somehow. <laughs> just a little bit. It was like that. My dad was in the studio, um, you know, his studio painting or writing. And I used to imagine he'd become a skeleton, which he has now because he's dead. But, but <laughs> I'd sort of have these nightmares when he was still quite healthy, much younger than I am now, in fact. And I think, oh, God, dad's turned into bones. Ah! And um, that was how life was for all of us, really. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I cannot um, change a tire or drive a car or fill in a form or do... I can do emails, but I can't scan and print. Um, and I can do practically nothing that other people do apart from basic functions, yeah. but I can write any number of songs, poems, all that yeah. stuff, you know, because that's what we learned to do. We didn't learn to do real things. But you could lead a country if asked to do so. Well, I wouldn't make a worse job of leading a country than the people yeah. who are leading it. I mean, I, I, my, my first choice from the rock community would be Billy Bragg, obviously. Yeah. Because he actually knows how stuff works. Yeah. Bill is a, Bill is a realist. I'm me. Yeah. Um, I think what's interesting is that we're both offshoots of Bob Dylan. You know, Bill is like the sort of, um, you know... Uh, Times they are a change. The Woody Guthrie that, inspired. That, yeah, Bob and I'm the yeah. sort of self involved bloke in the polka dot shirt. Yeah. And, um, but actually, it all, you know, Dylan went through all those persona, you know, he was yeah. uh, astonishing, but, you know, he's not here either. Well, by the way, uh, we were just in Nashville a couple of days ago and we went to the Country Music Hall of Fame where they have a Bob Dylan exhibit. And I thought of you because I know how important Bob Dylan was to your, your uh, evolution as a creative person. And there's an interesting exhibit there. I don't know if you've yeah, seen it. Yeah, yeah. Right, um, it explains it. Yeah. Yeah, it talks about Bob Dylan coming into Nashville and using Nashville studio musicians. And in a way, the exhibit is really about the session guys, the guys who played on the records. Yes, and, and it's, you know, 50 years since those first came out. And this has been my first chance to really find out about, um, you know, Charlie McCoy and Kenny Bot Bot Buttry and Hargus Pig Robbins and all yeah. those people that I just saw in small print on the back of Blonde on Blonde. Yeah. And, and bizarrely, here I am 50 years later living in Nashville, having first heard of it because of, of Dylan, um, who was not a Nashville cat. Yeah. Uh, it, it's odd, but there's, as the exhibit shows, everybody, because Dylan actually had the holy grail at that point and knew the meaning of life, um, as soon as he popped up with a beard and had had some kids, everyone thought, right, we better grow a beard and have some kids and go to Nashville and make country records, you know. And, um, <laughs> I mean, I, I did it, uh, you know, I mean, in a way. I couldn't get to Nashville, but I, I did some of those things. Yeah. Um, because I assumed that D Dylan, 
he must know. So everybody did that. You know, and yet, yeah. and then, but I say everybody, there's that song, there's everybody was kung fu fighting, but obviously not everybody was a tiny fraction of the available populace. This is why statistics are so misleading. <laughs> you know, you can just take a sound bite. Everybody was kung fu fighting. Oh, God. No, 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 just a couple of people, and there was a close up on them. And, and, um, but, you know, my parents disappeared when I was sent off to this wealthy pen penitentiary for the, well, you know, and, and then a lot, you know, along came Dylan. So every day yeah. somebody played like a Rolling Stone on the house gramophone. And so within six weeks, I'd forgotten about my family altogether. And I just wanted to have curly hair and sunglasses and a polka dot shirt and go to Nashville. Bingo. All I yeah. need is a poem. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was powerful. And I'm, you know, was it, you must have been paying attention to songs and lyrics or poems or something in order for those songs to hit you as hard as they did at that time. Oh, my dad, I mean, I, he, you know, he liked words. We had a lot of words. Yeah. We, we didn't have... I mean, he used to listen to the football and stuff, but I never got that. And, and you know, we were all pigeon-chested and had ingrowing feet and stuff, and we were just not good at sport, bad hand-eye coordination. So we all went into words. I, I mean, you'll meet the rest of them eventually. <laughs> uh, I, it's good stuff. I, words yeah. are like, I don't know. I. Yeah. I mean, words have survived the transition from the, from the printed page via the fax machine into um, text and social media and emails. Yeah. Even today, you and I are conversing with words. There's almost no substitute. And that's why I like them. I put them in songs. Yeah. And I, you know, I, it's... Yeah. I, I, uh, they've stood the test of time. They've stood the test. Yeah. I mean, imagine trying to say yeah. a simple thing like everybody was kung fu fighting, even without yeah. words. What? You'd have you'd have to draw a little pictograph. Yes, yes, yeah. which would be tiring. Yeah, I mean, it would be, and uh, it would be it could be easily misinterpreted. Well, either yeah. that or everyone would have to be a damn good artist. Yeah. You're right. I mean, God, a hieroglyphic world. Well, there's always that to go back to and look forward to. <laughs> ah, mondo ideograms. <laughs> Um, so there is, I mean, both of our artists this week, both of our guests moved to Nashville, and uh, there is a, a remarkable thing going on in Nashville. It's not just the crazy tourism that happens on Lower Broadway. I did learn this week that Nashville has become the bachelorette party capital of the United States. And uh, it was in full flower when we were there. Um, just parades, parades. Those people on bikes, the bars. That the, you, yeah, the, the, the yeah. pedal yourself yeah. to oblivion uh, Well, it's things. a good place to go, but it's a terrible way to do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd and like to apologize on behalf of our yeah. fair city for that. <laughs> but you, but there is also this other, you, you found uh, a circle of friends, and you know, when we were in California, we saw Dave uh, Rawlings and Gillian Welch, and they're, they're sort of a hub of a different kind of Nashville that most people don't get to hang out in or, or visit. Uh, yes, I, I met them a dozen years ago and, and they produced a record of mine at Woodland Street. Right. So we've stayed in touch and they, they yeah, they're neighbors. We live on the same street. Yeah. And there's a lot of Grant Lee Phillips is there now. Brendan Benson, who's producing my new record. Um, I know uh, Rodney Crowell, he's there. And um, obviously, Did Sean and I just met in the supermarket a couple of weeks ago. Langhorn Slim, yeah. Yes, Langhorn, indeed, Langhorn. Um, and so there's just, there's lots of people, yeah. you know, they're not all twangy. Yeah. <laughs> but I am. You're um, twangy. I'm twangy. But it yeah. said that on the label when yeah. you arrived. Yeah. You <laughs> introduced that. And, and um, truth yeah. in advertising. Um, uh, we're going to get back to music. I just want to just, once again, just, just to, you know, I, I mentioned this to, uh, to, to Langhorn Slim as well, just the idea of, of being at it and keep, keeping at it, you know, writing songs and adapting to the changing world and where people don't need records anymore and the social media is driving it, but you're, you're at it and this, it takes great courage and, and we applaud you for doing that. Well, that's awfully sweet. Yeah, you? well, you know, I'm, so, <laughs> I'm a softie at heart. Um, anyway, uh, we're going to get back to music. Yes, I'm going to bring, uh, bring, hopefully, yeah, my um, partner in many things, Emma Swift, is going to come and join me. Em's uh, actually was living in Nashville before I was. It's th through her that I came to move there. 
and met a lot of people there, and I've uh, even borrowed, slipstreamed her in this choice of some of my session players on this new record. So M has an awful lot to do with it. M's going to join me for a couple of older songs of mine, as you are. So oh. do we go over to there? I, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to come over as well? I, I will, sure, if you'd like me to. This is going to look fantastic, yeah. On the radio, especially. On the radio. Well, you know, the whole thing with radio is it, is it leaves it to the listener's imagination. Yeah. As far as they're concerned, we're inside a snow globe where these little tiny multicolored luminescent pieces of confetti are falling down on us. And as you home in, you see each one is a tiny little pulsing squid. <laughs> and that's what they're thinking as they listen to this. Yeah. So then you're going to drift across the aquarium to our side of the yeah. stage. And, um, no ink. No Don't, ink. No ink. I thought you said that. That's a wonderful thing to say on the radio. No ink. Okay, there's going to be a little bit of dead air while we drift over there. Hang on. Welcome back, Robin Hitchcock. <laughs> 